Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at deploying an Angular app using CodeBuild and the AWS CLI. So let's get to it. So I've got the buildspec.yaml file open, and the first thing I'm gonna actually remove is the artifact section. And the reason why we're not gonna use this anymore is that now what we're gonna do is deploy the files from our build output directly to the S3 bucket. We're not gonna create a separate bucket to deploy the artifacts because at the end of the day, we want the output of this build to go directly to our website bucket. So I'm gonna delete all this. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a post build event here. So we go commands, and then I'm gonna issue a command here. Now the command I'm going to use is part of the AWS CLI and there's a service called the S3 service inside of that. And what, what I wanna do is I wanna sync the files that we have from our build output to the files that are stored in the bucket. Now currently we don't have any files in the bucket. So what will happen is all the files that are in the build will end up in the bucket. But for subsequent builds, it will basically sync up uh, any files that uh, are missing or it'll update files that exist and so on and so forth, okay? So to do this, what you need to do is just type AWS, which is basically the XE for the AWS CLI. And then I'm gonna type S3 because we're working with S3 then I'm gonna use the word sync. So this means sync all the files from the, or what we're about to declare as the directory of where we wanna get the files from to a bucket. Okay, so now I'm gonna type dot slash dist slash angular devops. And the reason why we're using this folder is this is where the output exists in the container, right? So dot basically means current directory because you know essentially that's where the files are. And then we're drilling into the disk folder that we just created and then into the Angular DevOps folder, okay? So that's where we're getting the files from. The next bit is to specify the S3 bucket. And we use this S3 syntax like so. It's kind of like a HTTP URL, but it's not. It's just some S3 scheme. And then we just specify the name of the bucket. So we've got Angular DevOps Production, okay? So that's the location where the files are going to go into that bucket right there. Now, just a couple other things we also need to do to get this working. If you remember when we manually copied the files into the bucket, we had set them as read only public so that people could view it on the internet. Well, if I was to run this command right now, what would happen is we would copy the files into the bucket, but they wouldn't have public read access. So to get, whoops, to get around the uh, public reading issue, we use this thing called access control list. So it's dash dash ACL. And then inside of uh, quotes here, we just put the word public dash read, okay? And that will say, for all the files that we upload, we want them to have public read access. So that's all cool. Um, the only other thing that we really wanna do is because Angular changes the name of the file, so if I come up and I look, in fact, into my disk folder here, these bundles here, these hashes inside the bundle, those can change when you change your source code. So that means that the next time I do a build, main may not start with .1e4 C blah, 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 right? It might be five, seven, six, all right? So this is a problem for the sync because what's gonna happen is you're going to have two mains with different hashes. Now the index.html will still refer to the right one, but your bucket will start to grow and you'll have all these files that exist that you don't really need anymore. So to get around that, 
we're just going to use another flag called dash dash delete and this will delete any files that it that basically exist in your bucket that don't exist in the output of the build right so that's kind of what we need here and that's what we're going to, what we're going to use one other thing we kind of need to do here is in fact i might leave this for a future video i'll leave that bit out so i think this is enough for us to get the files deployed now to our bucket and syncing the information together so i'm going to save this and i'm going to push this command to git and then we will see what happens when we run the build so i've got my code build project open and as you can see down here in our latest run we've got an error okay so the status has failed let's have a look as to why i'm going to scroll down the log now so there's a long way down that's all the install stuff that we already know about keep on scrolling down until we hit the bottom and we get an error in our post build phase which we just added now the issue is it's returned an exit status of one but if we look up here we've got this access denied right and we've got an access denied when we're trying to call list objects which ie means we're trying to look inside the bucket to see what files are already exist in there. So we don't have the right permissions on our Angular DevOps production bucket for this code build to be able to do what it needs to do, okay? So we're gonna address that, but before I do that, I wanna actually make sure that we're not generating artifacts anymore. So I'm gonna, in fact, instead of scrolling back up, I'm gonna click on build project, I'm gonna, uh, I've already got it open. I'm now going to click edit and go artifacts. And I'm just going to remove the artifact here and just go update artifacts. So we're not generating any more artifacts out of this build. And then in my S3 console, I'm going to go into my main root directory. I'm going to empty this bucket. All right, so I'm going to basically grab this and empty it and then as well, on top of that I'm going to delete it so I'm going to do the same thing copy the text and paste and confirm so that bucket should now be gone okay cool so I've removed the artifacts so what I'm going to do now is going to open up services I go to I am I'm going to go to roles and I'm gonna edit my Angular DevOps role again. And I expand it, edit policy. And this time, we need to give it permissions to our deployment bucket. Well, to our, you know, where we're deploying it to. Now this here is something I don't need anymore because we're not generating artifacts. So I'm gonna remove that permission but I'm gonna add a new one. So the service I'll choose obviously is going to be S3. So select that. I'm going to first specify the resources. I'll come back to access in a minute. And in fact, it won't let me do that. So I'll have to choose the access first. So there's a number of things that we need in order to do a sync with the ability to delete on a bucket. The first thing we need is we need to be able to list the items in a bucket. Then we need, uh, so we do need other access for write, but I'm gonna choose a different resource for that. So I'm choosing list, list bucket. Now I can pick resources. I'm choosing a specific resource. I'm gonna click add ARN. And the one I'm going to choose is the angular devops production bucket okay so what we're doing here is we're giving our code bill instance access to be able to look inside that bucket all right so obviously we need to do more than this but we can close that permission for the moment i'm going to add an additional one so another s3 option here and choose that 
This time, I want to be able to affect the objects or the files, so to speak, inside of that bucket. I'm going to come down to right, and I want to do a couple things. First, I want to be able to put objects in the bucket, and I also want to be able to delete objects from the bucket. Because remember that sync thing, if it finds a file that no longer exists in the build output, it's going to delete the file from the bucket. If we do not specify delete object here, it will fail. Put object allows us to insert or update files in the bucket. So they're the two permissions we need. Now we need one more permission and it's on permission management and we need to be able to check put object ACL. This allows us to specify that access control list parameter to make it read only and public, okay? So they're the three permissions we need in order to run that sync command. So now I'm gonna come and choose resources. And this time I'm going to also pick the same bucket. So Angular DevOps production, but on this occasion, I'm gonna choose any object. So star and click add. And now I'm going to review the policy. Now I'm happy with everything here, so I'm gonna click Save Changes. Now you might get this prompt or you might not get this prompt. If you do, just delete the version and save. And now we have the permissions necessary to do the build and deploy the code into the bucket, okay? So I'm gonna come back to Code Build and I'm gonna rerun that build. So Code Build. and click on my Angular DevOps Production 2. And I'm gonna start the build. And I'm going to click Start Build. So I'm not gonna sit here and watch the entire uh, build go through here. I'm just gonna stop the recording for a moment and we'll come back when the build is done. So the build's finished. And as you can see, it succeeds now. But if I go all the way to the bottom of this log file, so I keep scrolling, in fact, I'll just quickly click the little left thing here and scroll all the way to the bottom. As you can see now, in the entering post build phase, we have a bunch of files that are being copied to the bucket. So you can see here, upload, dist, angular, devops, fab icon to, and there's the name of the bucket and the name of the file in the location of the bucket. And we see that with a whole range of different files, right? So that's pretty cool. Let's go over to the bucket and just confirm that. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna open the Angular DevOps production bucket now. And there are all the files, okay? Pretty cool. If I come to properties and now we try and run it as a static website, just to make sure everything's all good and there's our web application. So it's all working as expected. Refresh, and we've got feature one. If I click feature two, we should get feature two, and everything seems to be working as intended. So that's pretty cool. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, what we're gonna do is move on from code build, and we're gonna start looking at code pipeline. So I'll see you in the next video.